Hello and good morning, BBE family. It is a good day today. I'm finally feeling better after I feel like being sick for weeks. Um, today, I'm really, really excited because we're going to talk about my favorite focus tips um, for new photographers. And why I say new photographers is because this is something that like, um, these are very simple things that you can fix immediately, like at your next session, like right now. Um, and you can implement at your next session. Um, and it has everything to do with camera settings. So I'm not going to go tell you to go get a new lens. I'm not going to go tell you to get, to go buy anything. These are just like very, very simple camera setting tweaks that you can start implementing at your next session. And so I have a question for you. So if you're watching live or you're watching the replay, my question for you is when do you notice that your images are soft? When do you notice that your focus is a little off? Like when is it, is it during when your clients are moving? Is it specifically with kids? Is it when you have a big group of people? Um, so I just want you to kind of comment below. When do you notice that focus is an issue for you? Because I feel like whenever you can kind of pinpoint it, you'll know what to fix on your camera settings that we're about to talk about. So if you are brand new and you have yet to download our free gift for you, we have an ebook that you can print out. You can go and make, like we made it as an actual book. It's called The Beginner's Guide to Photography. Um, do not pass go collect $200 until you download this ebook. It's totally free for you. Um, we'll put the link around this video in the comments um, in the description so you can go ahead and get your hands on the Beginner's Guide to Photography ebook. And actually a lot about what we're going to be talking today is like the very first chapter of the ebook, which is all about how to shoot manual mode, camera settings. I literally write it all down for you. I give you picture examples. Um, and so if you're a visual learner and you just need like to get your hands on something and read it and like refer back to it, you'll definitely, definitely want this ebook. So it's free. Like there's no reason for you not to go ahead and download it right now. Um, so download this ebook, comment below. What is, when do you notice your biggest focus issues? When are your pictures soft? Lots of people, moving people all the, every time, every time you shoot. Um, Cause I really want to kind of like pinpoint where you're at and what your problem is. So we can kind of fix the issue right now today before you go to your next session. Okay. Let's talk about my favorite focus tips for new photographers. So you can start getting sharp photos. Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about is your manual mode settings. Okay. So if you're not yet shooting in manual mode, Go ahead and download the ebook and um, or we have a free class for you where I teach you exactly how to shoot in manual mode. That's how you basically take it off of auto and you control every single aspect of the focus of your photo, where the focus goes, how bright you want the photo to be, how dark you want the photo to be, your exposure, all the things you're in control and not your camera. Okay, so if you are shooting in manual mode, what I want you to think about next time you change or tweak your aperture, which if you read the ebook or taken my free class, aperture is the first step of changing your manual mode settings. Aperture determines how much of the photo is in focus. For example, you might have a photo where there's five people, a whole family in the image. You want all of the people to be in focus, but you also want the creamy, dreamy, professional looking background, right? In that case, you're going to want your aperture to be up. And the way that I teach it, my simple BB rule is that set your aperture to the number of items that you want in focus or the number of people you want in focus in the photo. Again, you can tweak this with your own creativity, but if you have five people in the photo, like it's good, it's a safe rule to put your aperture at 5.6. Okay. There's, it's just a simple, easy to remember thing. And a lot of times new photographers see seasoned photographers shooting a family of five at F 2.8 aperture 2.8. I can do that. Seasoned photographers can do that. And with lots and lots and lots and lots of practice, you can do that. 
but not until you practice for hundreds of sessions for many years where you can shoot at a low, low aperture, okay? So my number one first focus tip for new photographers is to not be too prideful to shoot at a higher aperture. And I'm, I'm talking to new 2016 Brittany that I wanted to be, there was this photographer, um, her name is Mary Morantz. Now she's an author and speaker and she's amazing, but I looked up to her and I wanted to be like her. If you're in the, if you're in the Academy, you know, the stories of me and Mary Morantz and how much I just adored her and her work. She shot wide open, which means the lowest aperture that that lens can go. She would shoot at aperture like 1.4 with like a couple and she would nail the focus. And I would always try to do what she did because I wanted to be like her, but I was brand new and I didn't have the practice. I didn't have the equipment. I didn't have the lens. I didn't have the experience that she had. Um, and I was too prideful to just be a new photographer and to practice at a higher aperture. But let me just tell you, if you are shooting two people, a simple BB roll to help you maintain focus on both of those people is to put your aperture, which is the first setting in our AIS manual mode, um, um, process, set your aperture at 2.8. If you're shooting four people, set your aperture at 4.0. If you're shooting five people, now this is gonna have this is gonna make you kind of adjust other settings, but it's at least going to get your images in focus. And that's what we're talking about today. Because here is an here's a God's honest truth. You can't fix a soft photo. You can fix a dark photo, you can fix a bright photo, you can fix a photo that has an off-white balance. You can fix a crappy crop, but you can't fix an out-of-focus image. And that's why, as a new photographer, I want you to not focus on your editing, your cropping, your posing until you freaking nail down focus. Because that's all that matters at the end of the day. And it's the only thing you can't fix on the back end. Okay, is this making sense? Let me know. All right, so first off is aperture. And again, this is all in here and it's in the free class and we can um, post both of them around this video. Second focus tip, and this is something that I also was a little bit prideful with and I think I was just a little bit confused at the very beginning when I was learning how to be a photographer. Second focus tip is try to have a, the fastest shutter speed that you can, that you can. I'm not saying go and just like make it all the way at the top and then I'm gonna have my aperture at 4.0 and no, cause then you'll probably have a dark photo the way that you know you do your, your manual mode settings. Do your fastest shutter speed that you can, okay? I thought as a new photographer, that if I had my shutter speed too fast, it would mess up the photo. And that's false. The only thing that can mess up a photo is if your shutter speed is too slow, okay? So inside of your camera, you have a shutter curtain that goes like this, okay? Whenever you take a photo and your shutter curtain goes, it captures whatever is happening and then it closes, and then whatever's in between that curtain is the photo that you take. And so if your shutter speed is too slow, if your shutter speed is too low, then you're gonna capture and, the, and your, your, your image is gonna look blurry. So the faster the shutter speed, the better when you're trying to get sharp, in focus images. And if you are, you know, implementing my AIS system, my simple manual mode system, which please do not go to bed tonight without learning this. I have free resources for you that you can learn this and implement it today, okay? If you're implementing the AIS system, you're gonna notice that I started with aperture and then I skipped ISO, okay? Because ISO, has a little bit of factors to do with focus, but the main one is shutter speed, 
okay? So the faster the better, and my simple BB rule so that you don't have blurry photos is to not go below 1 250th of a second, 1 over 250. That's just one of the things, y'all know how I teach, I like to simplify as much as I can because I got a lot going on and I, got, I don't have enough brain power, I got the mom, I've been having mom brain for seven years and I couldn't remember fractions and all the things and you know, lens to ratios and all that. So I just made it very, very simple. My first BB rule is my aperture rule. Equal your aperture to the amount of people in the photo to guarantee a in-focus image, okay? And then secondly is I'm not gonna let my shutter speed go below 1 2 50th of a second, okay? These are very simple. This is not the Bible. This is not facts. This is just simple. If you're like me and you're like, I just need simple, this is what I have for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So the faster the shutter speed, the better for in-focus photos. Third and final tip. And y'all, I didn't know about this little setting that our cameras offer us literally until about two years into photography business after about 50 weddings, hundreds of portrait sessions. I didn't know about this one magical setting that I'm about to share with you. It's fine. You live and you learn and now I'm sharing it with you so you don't go two years not being offered this setting. Okay. There is a setting on your camera and it's located right here on mine, on my little handy dandy Nikon. It's our AF setting. It's our autofocus setting. What this setting does is this is Nikon, Canon, Sony, whoever you have, they want to help you make sure that your images are in focus because if your images look good, Nikon then looks good. So Nikon and Canon and Sony, they all implemented this one little button right here, the autofocus button, mine's on the side. You might need to look in your manual or do a quick YouTube video of where is my AF button on my camera. And what this setting does is when I press it, my little screen gives me two options, AFS, and AFC, okay? So AFS means that it's like a still shot. It's not moving, so this might be a portrait, a senior that's not moving. This could be bridal details at a wedding day. This could be real estate photos. And what that does is when you put it on AFS for still, in Canon, I, feel, I believe it's called single shot. That means that, that our cameras are gonna help us have the maximum optimal focus mode for these still shots. And it's going to do whatever voodoo magic it's doing inside of this camera body, and it's gonna help us capture a crisp, focused image, okay? But that's not the setting that we have trouble with, right? Still shots are not our problem. It's the moving kids. It's our dog that we're practicing on that's running full speed at us. It's when we go um, on a wedding day and it's like all these people are moving and dancing and the wobble starts coming on and you gotta like capture movement and motion. You could be at a sporting event or a football game and you're trying to capture the players and you're just having a hard time with like the focus, which is why our cameras have given us this other function, AFC, AFC for continuous. It's AI servo for Canon. AFC is literally what my camera settings, that camera setting lives on. Because most of the time, if you're in my posing course in the academy, you know that even when I have my seniors pose I'm still having them move just slightly so they don't look like a, like that, okay? So they, look, so they look a little bit more authentic. We have our own posing system, right? Which means they're constantly moving even though they're in the same pose, which means I leave my autofocus mode on AFC or AI servo pretty much 24 seven. And this is Nikon helping me keep my moving seniors, keep, my crazy kids and my family sessions and my mini sessions in focus. 
It's a helpful little tool that Nikon and Canon, they have so graciously, graciously given us. Do not go two years of your photography journey missing this one setting. Don't do it. Because I look back and I'm like, crap, I really did a huge disservice to all my brides and families and all things because I could have given them a better product, could have given them a better image if I would have just known this little AFC function right there, okay? So again, it's nothing that you have to do. You just have to turn it on. Turn it on to AFC and just leave it on there because nine or 10 times what you're shooting, I'm pretty sure is probably moving even just a little bit. So it's gonna capture the movement and give you a little bit more help for you on top of appropriate manual mode settings, okay? And I'm gonna give you one last little bonus tip. So if you're just tuning in or need a fresh recap, recap my three favorite focus settings for new photographers is making sure your aperture is high enough for the thing that you're shooting. A simple BB rule is to equate your aperture number to the number of people or objects you want in focus. Okay, because that's what aperture does. Okay, so if you have two people, 2.8. Four people, 4.0. Okay? Second is shutter speed. Make it as high as you can to get a proper exposure in camera. Okay? Remember, the lower the shutter speed, the longer you have a chance to get a blurry photo. Okay, you want it to go fast. Okay? And my simple BB rule is don't go below 1 2 50th of a second. These are all, again, in here that you can download. And then my third and final huge tip for new photographers is your autofocus mode. Turn your autofocus mode on AFC, or if you're Canon, AI Servo, so that you can have your camera body help you get your images in the best focus possible. That's the recap, okay? All right, your bonus. Write this down too. Your bonus, if you're a new photographer, know this. Your lenses and your camera need to be yearly cleaned and calibrated so that it can have optimal function and use. Think about if you drove your car for years at a time and it never got a tune up and it never got its oil changed and it never got cleaned up. It would start acting wacky and funky. Things would start like, you know, shaken and you don't know why you, like your car isn't functioning the way that it should. It's because it hasn't had a tune up. This camera is no different than your car. It's a little different than your car. It doesn't have gasoline or anything like that, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's no different. It needs cleaning and tuning up at least once a year, especially if you use it every single day, you might need it twice a year. Okay. Think about how much you drive your car. That's how many times you need a, a new oil change. It's the same thing with this. Okay, so who, how do we do this, Brittany? I don't know how to clean and calibrate my gear. Well, I have a YouTube video on how to clean it if you just want some daily maintenance, some monthly maintenance. But we also have a BBE member in here. His name is Chris Bruyette. It's one of our few good men in this group. I'm gonna tag him in this video. And he has a company called The Spotless Camera. And literally what he does for a living is he takes our babies and he loves them and he sings lullabies to them. And then he calibrates our lenses to our specific cameras so that they are now married and are on the same page and they are functioning at the optimal function that it can possibly give you. Okay. So because he loves us and loves BBE and loves our community, he is offering his business and his service to all of you. You can literally ship your babies to him to get it cleaned and calibrated. And when you get him back, when you get your babies back after they've been with Chris, they are prettier, they work better, you are getting sharper focused images because he is making sure they're calibrated to your specific camera body. Okay, and again, this isn't something that I knew was a thing until I noticed two years later when I was shooting 100 weddings and all this stuff. I was like, man, my camera's just not doing what it used to do. And then I learned about Chris Bruyette. Changed my life. He's also the coolest, funniest dude in the world. And if you're not following him, then you're missing out on some life, okay? So that is your bonus. Chris Bruyette, send your baby to him. He takes really, really good care of them. 
he'll even take some selfies with him and show you how he, he's tucking them in at night. And, and once he's done, he ships them back to you. So um, we love Chris. All right. So again, this was a lot of information, especially if you're a new photographer. So if you're just tuning in, replay this, take the notes, and then practice and implement what you learned. Okay. Also reach out to Chris if you need any cleaning or calibrating. Um, this is not an ad. He, we, I don't get any affiliate money from this. I'm just sharing something that I believe to be true. And he is the greatest dude. And, um, just sharing the things that I love here. Okay. If you're not in the Academy and this was helpful for you, if you learned like, Oh crap, I just learned a lot. Like I really like how she teaches. I would really like a community. I would really like accountability. I would really like a step-by-step -by, -step by step curriculum in photography and editing and posing and business and marketing and mini sessions and flash. I got you. We created an entire step-by-step -by, -step by step by step curriculum just for photographers, especially new photographers to teach them literally every single thing I knew to bring my business to six figures as a mom with three under three, three babies and diapers. I did this. And if I can do this, so can you. And hundreds of other people have done it, and so can you. They've quit their jobs, they've gone full time, and if this is something that you feel called to do, and you're passionate about doing, this is the next step for you. And I can be your teacher, I can be your coach, I can be your guide to help you lead you to do and create the things that you feel called to do. So that's our academy. Um, if you have any questions about the Academy, I'll also put a link around this video too. So you can kind of check it out, look into it. And if you just want to dig around and see if this is something that you would like, we can give you a seven day free trial. You can literally join us, join our Facebook group, watch a few of the lessons modules in, in the Academy and see if this is for you. And if it's not, quit the trial and go about your life and, and enjoy your photography journey. But if it is for you, then you'll have a space, you'll have a community, you'll have a curriculum, and you have lifetime access for it, to it, not for it. You'll have lifetime access to it. Um, anyways, we're constantly adding new things to the academy, and once you're in, you get anything new that we add to it. You're like grandfathered in. So join us in the academy, and if you haven't already, download your ebook. We have a free class for you. We've got a YouTube channel for you. Y'all, we got you here. We're glad you're here. We love you. We're here to support you. And we're really, really excited to just kind of like lead you through um, this photography journey in any way that we can. So go ahead and implement these focus tips and I will see you next week.